I literally hit the upload button for the last video and I had a knock at the door. Guess what was inside? Brand new contact wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this contact wheel on and hopefully it fixes the problem. I'm gonna go put this on and we'll see what happens. So I watched their video on how to replace this wheel. It should be fairly easy. There's a little Allen key right here and this piece should come off and then the wheel should come off and then the new wheel should go back on and this little retainer here so it holds everything on. I should be able to do this in less than a minute. <laughs> wheel comes off and there's a little washer there and put the new one on all right so I haven't checked it yet but just from spinning it and eyeballing it it already looks a lot better than the other one did. I'm just gonna um, change this around here and we'll try it out on the machine. So it is like 80% better. There's still a little bit of vibration in this thing and I think it's coming from the drive pulley. I'm beginning to wonder if this thing was dropped or damaged in shipping somehow. Now when I unpacked it, I didn't really notice anything uh, strangely out of the ordinary. But when I went back and looked at the footage of unboxing this thing, I did notice that some of the styrofoam had pretty big impressions on it from where uh, the contact wheel was sitting and the drive wheel and all of the the wheels on this side they were kind of embedded into that styrofoam a little bit so maybe the thing got dropped and knocked some stuff out of whack during shipping so i just got off the phone with amk and they're going to send me a new drive wheel amk has been amazing their customer service is so far been it's been, I couldn't be any better. They want to make sure that the customer is 100% happy. They're going to send me out a new drive wheel. No questions asked. He just said, I'm going to send you a new drive wheel and see if that fixes it. Same with the contact wheel. No questions asked. I even offered to send them a video and he's like, nope, don't bother. I'm just going to send you a new one. And this thing got to me extremely quick, even during the holidays. It's Saturday right now and the guy's picking up his phone. I think they really stand behind their product. And again, they want to make sure that the customer's happy. And now it's time to go back in time. So if you watched the last video, you'll know that I started a new knife build. Now this is really just an experimental knife and the possibility of me ruining this knife during the making process is very high. The whole point of this knife is to test a couple of new processes, specifically my grinder and my heat treat oven. Um, and with my heat treat oven not working right now, I'm gonna have to wait on that, but uh, you get the idea. The steel I'm using is 3 16 by an inch and a half wide 1080 steel. And I don't know what it is lately, but 1080 is getting increasingly hard to find. This is one of my last pieces of 1080 um, and I'm having a really hard time finding it in the thicknesses that I need. So I'm just using some blue layout dye here to mark out the pattern on the steel. I stopped using spray tack because spray tack seems to clog up the belt and it's really difficult to get off the belt once the belts get all gummed up. And because it's really cold out, I just threw it in the oven here to help dry the layout dye. Then over to the bandsaw to cut out the rough pattern. Now this is not my bandsaw. Um, I decided to borrow one before I purchased one just to see whether or not I'd like it. Uh, these things are pretty expensive tools and I didn't want to put down a whole bunch of money if I didn't absolutely need to. But I'm going to tell you right now, these are extremely handy to have in the shop. Not only for cutting knife blanks, but also scale material and pins and all kinds of other stuff. I find myself coming to the bandsaw more than I ever thought I would have. So I'm definitely going to end up picking one of these up for myself in the future. So now I'm using my new grinder 
And uh, this thing's awesome. Um, incredible power. Much, much, much more power than a 4x36. And uh, even though I've never used a 1x30, I'm going to say that this thing is uh, way more powerful than a 1x30. But with that being said, it's, uh, it's kind of amazing at just how much everything is exactly the same. Um, there's not a whole lot of difference here between grinding on a 4x36 or a 1x30 and grinding on a uh, 2x72, other than the 2x72 has a lot more power. And a lot more power means everything's a lot faster. Now, I guess the only other difference between this and say my 4x36 is the fact that uh, everything is nice and perfectly square on this machine. And here's my happy dance. My 4x36 was a uh, kind of a cobbled together contraption with uh, plywood and all kinds of weird stuff going on. And uh, keeping things nice and square was one of the hardest things that I had to deal with when it came to grinding on that thing. Even though it, it sort of lacked power, it did get the job done. But the fact that I never really had a super square or super flat surface to work on really showed itself in the uh, final outcome or the final uh, finished knife. So let's talk about the uh, subject at hand here, which is drilling a bunch of holes in the tang of this knife. This knife is 3 16ths of an inch thick, and I'm going to be putting a full flat grind on this knife, which means I need to lighten the tang as much as possible uh, in order to give this knife good balance. Now about drilling, I get comments all the time from people saying to slow my drill press down. Uh, this is as slow as it goes. Um, I wish it did go a lot slower because it would give me more torque to get through the, uh, uh, the stock here. Um, I do have a more powerful drill press but the chuck on it is broken and uh, I need to get a new one. So here I'm just filing out some of those uh, center holes that I drilled uh, just to try and lighten the blade as much as possible. This knife isn't gonna be batoning or doing any kind of seriously heavy duty work. Um, this is a full flat grind, it's not meant for that. So this knife really doesn't need all of that strength in the handle. It really doesn't need hardly any strength in the handle since this is more of a slicing style knife and it's not gonna be doing any serious heavy duty work. And uh, I know it's ugly, but it doesn't matter. Oh, and we got another package in the mail. What do we have? What do we have? Ooh, a giant hunk of micarta. So one of the other things that I ended up getting is a granite surface plate. This is a 12 by, I think it's a 12 by 18 granite surface plate. Um, I ended up getting a really good deal on this right before Christmas. Now, this is a machinist surface plate. I'm not gonna be using it for what it was originally intended to be used for. My primary use for this is going to be flattening scales putting a piece of sandpaper on here and using this as a flat surface to sand on. Um, I'm also gonna be using this to check and see whether or not my knife is warped in any way. And I'm also gonna be using this to um, scribe my center lines for the grinds. It's super important to get that center line as accurate as possible and keep your grinds as accurate as possible on both sides of the knife. That's one thing that I've really struggled with in the past because I've never had a super flat surface to scribe to. This will hopefully fix that because what ends up happening is if you have one grind on one side of the knife that's slightly different than the grind on the other side of the knife if one of them is slightly off center versus the other one um, that can cause warping during the heat treatment also having a super flat surface that you can flatten scales on i've used the top of my workbench i've used two by fours sirens going off i've used sanded plywood and none of them have really worked out that well so i'm hoping that this solves some of my issues with keeping things straight and keeping things flat these things aren't really that expensive either i think this one was under a hundred bucks um now shipping on the other hand is going to be half of that so um you know for around 150 bucks you can probably find one that's this size on amazon and if i can i'll leave a link to uh, this in the description below and back to the build. So basically what I ended up doing here was coating the blade in layout dye and uh, layout dye works a heck of a lot better than magic markers do. Uh, just as a, a side note, buy some layout dye, it works much better. But basically what we did was we took a drill bit, the same diameter as our stock, which is 3 16 in this case, and we scribed the center line on one side of the knife, then we flipped the knife and scribed the center line down the same center line. And what that does is it leaves two lines that you can grind to. Basically what we'll do is we'll grind right to those lines and the thickness that remains is the thickness that we'll use in heat treatment. I believe I saw this done for the first time on Jeremy's channel, Simple Little Life. Most of you guys probably know who he is, but if you don't, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. A lot of good knife making tips over there. 
So now it's back to the grinder, my favorite thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of angle iron and this is nothing special. This is just a piece of angle iron I bought from Home Depot. Um, I cut it to length. I really don't know how long it is. It's, you know, you can see how long it is, but um, essentially what I do is I clamp the blade to the angle iron and then tilt my work rest to the angle that I want or the angle that I'm gonna be grinding to. Now I've been asked in the past how I know what angle to set my work rest to to match the bevel that I'm trying to grind and to be honest with you I just sort of guess at this. I've never really used a uh, formula to figure this out and the reason for this is because a lot of times I don't know the exact style of knife that I'm going to be making. At this point in uh, the grinding process I didn't think that I was doing a full flat grind but I uh, ended up looking at the knife halfway through grinding and realized it would probably be a better knife if it did have a full flat grind. So I just adjusted my work table until I got the grind that I was looking for. And here's the rough grind after I believe this is a 120 grit ceramic belt finish. And I think this is the first time I've actually been secure enough to show my rough grinds up close. And here I am filing in a choil uh, with a chainsaw file. Now I probably should have waited to do this after heat treating, but for some reason I just forgot and started filing. But the reason you want to do that is because sometimes you can end up getting a crack right where your choil is during the heat treatment process. And I think it's because uh, steel doesn't really like sharp corners um, when it expands and contracts and things like that um, and when you quench it. So um you know to avoid any cracks in that area it's probably best to just wait till after heat treatment to file in your choil so here i've just rotated my work rest into the vertical position and this is just really nice to uh, square off any remaining corners and radiuses and now time for the super insecure close-up And now it's time to abuse the granite surface plate. I realized that this is not what it was intended for, but this is exactly what I bought it for to flatten tangs and to flatten knife blanks. And having a flat surface like this makes a huge difference in the quality of the work and how flat your stock is. This is like 10 steps above sanding on plywood. And then right before heat treatment, I'll just hand sand up to 150 grit. So now let's uh, hear from the mad scientist himself. All right guys, so I've got everything sanded to 150 grit pre-heat treat. Uh, everything is nice and flat and everything's nice and square. I'm super happy with how it turned out so far. I might be a little thin along the edge here, but that's okay. Um, I can always go back to the grinder and thicken that up a bit uh, before I do my heat treating. Um, but for now, I think everything is good to go for heat treating. So with this being an experimental blade, let's, uh, let's try something a little bit different. What could the furnace cement be for? <laughs> so let's talk real quick. Um, to tell you the truth, I haven't been 100% sure how to structure these last several videos because with my equipment coming in not working correctly, um, I started on a knife and I haven't been able to heat treat it yet because the oven isn't working. Um, and to tell you the truth, I don't know when my oven's going to work. They may end up having to send me a whole new unit. Um, I'm not sure yet at this point. And that could be for who knows, four to six weeks down the road. I don't know if they have to make a new one from scratch or what the deal is, but uh, most of my videos before this have been sort of structured like um, entire videos, meaning they have a beginning and a middle and an end. Well, I don't really have an ending point because I can't finish the knife. Now I do have some special things planned for this blade. It's gonna take me a while to do that. Um, and hopefully I don't screw it up, but there's a very good possibility I could screw it up. And if that's the case, I'm not gonna have an ending to a video anyway. So um, I'm just gonna kind of film this for the next couple of weeks and uh, hopefully uh, everything ends up getting straightened out and we can get back on track or I can get back on track with how I structure my videos. So hopefully you don't mind the vlog style videos for uh, the next two, three videos. Um, we'll see. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in our next video.